So it's time for the next High Performance Made Simple presentation with Altium Designer. So welcome everybody. Uh, so let me start by saying Altium has been around for a long time and Altium Designer has been around a long time but a lot of our development in the past was based on good ideas from our R&D team which is fine. Many of them are electronics designers. And so we got, got some good design capabilities just by having inventive development team. But in recent times, we realized we also need to listen more to our users and to the market and what the problems are in the market. So we had a little game of family feud and we, uh, this is the way Christian and I are putting it today. Uh, we asked our customers, what is it that you need Altium Designer to become? What are the problems you're having with your PCB and electronics design? And these are some of the answers. They want, 83% uh, said they wanted much better performance. They want the tools to stay fast and snappy and not slow them down while they're designing large complex PCBs. They wanted a unified flow. Most of our users and people we interviewed said, we like the schematic and PCB and library editors to be the same user interface and we've had that for a long time. So that's good, but we need even more integration in the software to get extra functions and capabilities without having to leave and use different, different software programs. We want it to be easier to use. More stable, that's important. Uh, we don't want the software to crash when we're uh, getting ready to finish a design. And a few people even said we really need uh, the CAD tools to be cross-platform, to be able to use, choose whichever operating system we want to choose. Um, now at the moment Altium Designer only runs on Windows, but, uh, but we are working on solving that problem. So based on this user feedback, we also uh, thought, what, what are the three things that really make Altium Designer different from other CAD tools? And it, it's these three things. It's easy to use, it has a cohesive and user-friendly interface, and it helps people get designing right out of the box. We, we looked at the way people evaluate Altium Designer, and most of the time they don't even read the, the Getting Started Guide or the, the uh, documentation to begin with, because it's, it's fairly straightforward. But there's a lot of power under the hood and a lot that can be done uh, as you become a more advanced user as well. But you can be productive right away. It's powerful. Um, as a company, our philosophy is to include features that are advanced when we create them um, and not, not withhold them for high-end tools or have a big price difference. For example, in Altium Designer 18, we released multi-board design support, which I'll show in just a little while. And in the past, this was considered a very high-end feature and other, other ECAD tools charge a lot of money for this. But we thought we need to include this in the main software because everybody has this problem of designing multi-board systems. So why should we withhold this capability? So we included that. So it's powerful and it's modern. It's the latest design tools and we keep investing in the software. We keep developing it year after year, adding more capabilities, and we're committed to make it the best product on the market that we can do. So what I want to show you in this, in this demo is show you s what we mean by powerful PCB design um, and look at the modern interface experience, show you how to do fast and high quality routing in our PCB editor and we'll look at visual power analysis with our uh, PDN analyzer. Real-time bill of materials scrubbing and creation, and this is important that, that there's a link to the supply chain to make sure all the parts in your design are available when you need them. Uh, the seamless PCB documentation process in Altium Designer, including uh, the Draftsman Editor, that makes it very, very easy to do your assembly and fabrication drawings without, again, without having to go out into a separate CAD tool. You should be able to do everything in one tool and, it, and it's the same UI and easy to use. 
And then finally, we'll talk about the interconnected multi-board assembly capabilities in the software. So first, let's, let's talk about powerful PCB design. Altium Designer is 64-bit CAD. This, uh, it took us a while to get there, but we finally have done it with version 18, so better late than never. But what that means is you can do your designs faster and you can get to release faster. And there's no limitation on the complexity or size of the printed circuit boards. We don't have limits on pin count or number of nets or number of layers. This really just depends on how much memory you have in your desktop. We can access all of it. 64-bit means unlimited, practically unlimited memory. And we've also done a number of optimizations in Altium Designer to use multi-threading and, and faster algorithms to speed up the overall design process. So things like polygon pour, repouring, design rule checking, uh, electrical rule checking, compiling of the design, and generating the Gerber or ODB++ outputs is all very, very fast because of multi-threading enhancements in the software. So let's move on to the modern design or modern interface experience. This is very different from our prior version in that we have now a dark charcoal theme. It's not everyone prefers this, but many people do. And we did this because staring at a screen for hours and hours on end, doing the design work and doing your CAD, it can be, uh, can be causing eye strain and, and fatigue on your brain staring at a light source all day. We observed how engineers work. And many people in engineering actually use dark theme for the text editor, we noticed, and for graphical tools like Adobe Photoshop. So in keeping with our modern um, ap approach to design, we wanted to make the user interface similar to that. But this is based on themes. And uh, in an in a upcoming release, we will also have additional themes that you can choose from to reskin the entire user interface with one click. But let me show you some of the other UI enhancements here. Um, I'll just talk about these really quick. We have not only the modern GUI styling in the dark background and the themes approach to design. There's a view configurations panel that makes it very, very fast to customize the printed circuit board layout view in 2D and 3D. So you can choose different uh, layer sets to be enabled. You can change the colors of the layers. We have a properties panel. And this, this comes down to having a unified design tool as well. What the properties panel allows you to do is edit multiple objects and the common attributes of those objects no matter what editor you're in. If you're in schematic, PCB, the library editors, the properties panel operates the same in all of them. So you, you learn one way, one approach to editing data in the design and it's applicable to the entire design process. So it's very easy. And there's a system-wide search tool that's new, which allows you to find any command or any component or any net or any object at all in your entire design workspace. So let's take a look at what those actually look like here. I'll switch over to Altium Designer. So this is Altium Designer 18. And I have a schematic open right now. And I've got quite a few reference designs here. Some of them are quite complex, like this one. You see there's a lot of schematics there. So let's start with that properties panel. I'll dock that out here. The properties panel shows me all the properties of the current document. So I'm in a schematic, so it shows me the schematic grids, the grid options, the, the which units I'm using. If there's a template, what template would I be using? And the parameters that go into the title block. So things like address, author, all of that can be entered in here for this, for this schematic page. Now, at the top of the properties panel, we have a selection filter. So if I, need to, if I need to edit a bunch of different objects, I can select. And because dissimilar objects are selected, the only common attribute is the net name. Well, I don't want to change all the net names. So I'm going to use the selection filter, because what I do want to do is edit the text font and color for all of those net labels. So I'm going to set this 
to accept only net labels in the selection. And I click and drag and it selects only the net labels. And then I can edit the text. I'll make that Verdana and dark blue. So it's very easy to get to select and edit similar groups of objects in this tool. Anything that I click on here, be it a component, if I can select a component, you can see it shows me all the component attributes. So the designator, what the part is, which library it came from, the view of the footprint here with its uh, 3D model as well, and component parameters, which might be ne necessary for my bill of materials or other reports and the pin list. So it's really comprehensive, the data in this, in this properties panel. But sometimes there's so much information in a panel, it might be hard to find or y you might just want a faster way to find the attributes or shortcuts that you need. So to facilitate that, we have the search feature. If I go up here and I type in grid, it shows me just the options for the page to do with grid. So it instantly filters my options. Um, so there's the panel search and we have the same thing in the projects panel. Over here on the projects panel you can see all of the different design projects I have loaded right now. And in this particular one there's so many schematic sheets. Let's say I want to quickly find anything to do with DDR memory in, in my design workspace. So I'm going to type DDR and it shows me the schematics that, that have DDR in the file name and schematics that may have a net named or text object in them with the text DDR. So th that's good for finding documents. But look, I can also find nets and differential pairs. So if I double click on this, I should have the PCB open actually. It's the mini PC, let me bring that to the front. So this works with schematic and with PCB. And it, I double click on this. It's highlighting that net object. Now I don't have all the other layers enabled right now. So that brings me to the next thing I want to show you, which is the view configurations panel. So in PCB, view configurations shows me all the different copper uh, signal and plane layers and mechanical documentation layers in the design. And I can very quickly with a single mouse click on the eye icon, re-enable all of those copper layers. So this is now highlighting this entire diff pair. If I double click on this one, that's another one. So it's very easy using this project panel search to find your way around designs and examine and do design reviews. Now the, the layers and colors panel, at the moment I'm just, let me clear that selection. I'm looking at the entire design in 2D. And let's say you're doing component layout and you're placing parts around the top of the board. We can turn off all the copper layers and enable just the top component layers. So this is showing me all the pads and fan out vias silk screen, solder mask for the top layer objects. Okay, so it's very quick and easy to, to change the view to make it facilitate the phase of design that you're in. Let's say I'm going to do then the bottom layers so I can enable those very quickly. And I can even reverse the view of the board so I'm looking at it as if I've turned it over in my hand. So all the silk screen text is right reading right now. And when I'm done editing my component placement on the bottom of the board, I can flip back to the top based view and re-enable all my copper layers for routing and editing. So the, the layers and colors panel also has a view options tab. And this allows me to quickly set transparencies for if different object types or put everything in drafts mode. If, if you like to work in drafts mode, I personally don't. I'd rather have polygons transparent and everything else solid. And we can switch between 2D and 3D and you can see there's shortcut keys shown there as well to help you remember. You can hit 3 to go to 3D mode. Let me zoom out a bit. 
And you can just see the performance of Altium Designer 18 with a big complex, or reasonably complex design like this one, switching between two and 3D modes very, very fast using our native 3D graphics engine. And the view of the board is fairly realistic with nice, uh, nice anti-aliasing capabilities and so on. So, but if you want to change that view configuration, you can do it very quickly from this drop down here and change the color, color theme of the board. We can expand that out, make the core transparent so you can see inside the PCB. I want the core to be transparent so we can see inside the PCB. And then if I look at this, it's showing me through the 3D view exactly where that differential pair goes. So it's very easy to trace signals through the, through the PCB design, even in 3D to get a clear view of where everything's going. And uh, it can help you visualize how the fields and waves will be traveling around those those signals as well. So that's, that's the view configuration panel. Now, in addition to these panel searches to help you find different things in the design, we also have uh, a global search up here. So this allows you to search for anything in the entire workspace, not just the current file or project, or not just the, the uh, properties but the entire workspace. So if I start typing place, PL, it shows me the current relevant placement commands. It also shows me preferences in the system preferences. So if I go to graphical editing, um, oops, let me do that one more time, place. And I can go to preferences where there's, maybe this in this build it's not functioning, but it would show me, oh yeah, on place, there it is there. It shows me anything in preferences where the word place comes up in my search results, just as an example. So it's eas using that, it's easy to find your way around the user interface. You might notice in the top of each editor, we also have this, this toolbar that's always there. This is the active bar. And this, we did some analysis and we found out what are the most frequently used commands in each editor. And let's put them on this toolbar that's always there at the top. So within easy reach of, your, of one mouse click, uh, if you're in PCB, you can get all the routing tools, length tuning, via placement, text placement, etc. If I go into schematic, you'll see it's context sensitive and it gives me tools relevant to wiring up a schematic and placing hierarchical blocks and this kind of thing. There's a lot more to show in the user interface, but in the interest of not taking too much time, let's move on. So let's talk about fast and high quality routing and how we do that in Altium Designer. The real objective for PCB design is to be able to route complex topologies and repetitive things very, very quickly. Now, I talk to PCB designers and everyone agrees, we, most people do not use auto routers. And so we're not presenting what we call an auto router today. But what we do want to do is provide tools that allow you to manually route a design with some automation to accelerate the process. And so in Altium Designer, you can route the board and have autocomplete differential pairs, multi-signal routing and bus routing. That's all doable and driven by you with your mouse. But we also have uh, a visual routing acceleration technology here. And let me just show you this with another, another design that I'd set up to do this that follows your design rules and constraints. So first you set up your design rules and uh, you may have something like uh, DDR and this, this, d this design is partially incomplete and we have some uh, QDR memory connectors up here and down here, this is what I wanna show you. We have a DDR3 chip connecting to this uh, 
digital signal processor BGA. Let me go out of single layer mode. And we've only partly fanned this one out. So first, on my properties panel, I'm going to select the selection filter for only tracks and vias. And this is going to allow me to very quickly do a controlled fan out of this memory chip. So control C. I'll pick that pad as the reference point. And this allows me to generate a custom fan out pattern with alternating rows that gives me extra routing channels to get signals out from the center of this chip. I don't need that extra row there. So I'll delete that one. So this is a DDR3 chip. And with DDR3, and there might be more than one device, there often is, we have a combination of parallel length tuning that's required with the data, the data lines, the data byte lanes, and the clocks, which are differential pairs, because it's double data rate. There's a differential pair clock. And then for the address and control bus, we have a flyby topology where length tuning has to be done from the controller to the first chip and from the first chip to the second, second to third, third to fourth, etc., etc., and through the terminating components at the end of the, of the address bus. And all of that can be constrained in design rules in Altium Designer using a feature we call X signals. Uh, right now in this, in this particular example, I'm just going to select these nets here in, this, in the DDR3 and go to my active route panel. And you can see here with active route, it will also, where appropriate, if, if enabled, it will take care of single-ended and differential pair length tuning, pin swapping, and we can choose which layers we're going to allow it to route on. And we have some other options for controlling track-to-track -track spacing based on rules and meander. So I'm going to go out and give it a little more length over the Manhattan length to go. And I'm going to enable tuning. And so my design rules that it's going to follow for length tuning are enabled now. And I'll just click Active Route. Now, I could route these. A lot of these are parallel, and it's not that many connections. I could route that maybe in three, ma three to four hours with length tuning. And I could do that manually, trace by trace or pair by pair. No problem. Easy to do, right? Active Route. Did that actually run? Yeah, it's running. Nearly done. It's about 30 seconds worth. So to me, I could do it manually and it would look good and everything, but why would I do that when this is done so fast? And it's length tuned and it looks like a human, human job anyway. It's following my design rules. Now that's, that's just letting it go. Let's have a look on the single layer mode. So I can scroll through the layers and you, you can see the job it's done is it's pretty good. And we can even do some additional editing and clean up if we want to modify this as well. So that's active route. But one of the important things is there's also the route guide option. So this gives you a routing channel and you can specify exactly stay within this river and you can define where that's going to go across your board. So it's, it's keeping it within the confines of how a human would route across the board. So that's active route. And the idea is to get high quality and results you can be proud of, that, that basically user-guided automation. It'll get the job done faster. It, it will take care of pin swapping as well. So if you have swap-enabled components, it will do the pin swapping for you while it's routing the board, uh, routing those nets. It doesn't route the whole board. It just does one group of connections at a time. It's definitely user guided. Um, it'll take care of differential pairs, length tuning, and give you the option to do river routing with the route guide. So where is this? We, we insist that Active Route in Altium Designer is not an auto router. It is automation, but it is not an auto router. It's user guided automation. And so we're not all the way over at the auto routing end. 
we're somewhere back between automatic and manual but the idea is to get very high quality results but still accelerate the design process for you. So what are some of the other challenges we deal with to get designs of high quality today? Things are getting smaller. Our, our friends who manufacture chips are keep making them smaller and smaller. But what does that mean? It means we have to supply them with lower voltages. But those lower voltages for getting the same computing power also sometimes mean higher currents. And so we're dealing with smaller boards with low voltages and high currents and less margin for a voltage drop and, and uh, current density. And so we can end up with problems like component overload, copper overload that can lead to blistering or delamination on the PCB. And some, some problems relating to current density don't reveal themselves until a few months after production has begun and suddenly devices are failing in the field. So we really don't want this to happen. It can be very costly. And of course, there's, there's the obvious, you know, copper overloading and fusing and uh, excessive temperature rise. So why do we need to care about this? We did some other market research and we, we did some surveys and said what are the typical, what's the typical evidence that you have power delivery problems on your PCB design? And these are the results that we got back. Often Analog and front end circuits are randomly inaccurate or not, not working to within specifications. Um, and then ne the next most common response was that the CPU randomly resets and is uh, unpredictable in its behavior at different times. And so, and there's a whole lot of other responses as well. There's catastrophic failure or there's, there's, uh, delamination or solder mask discoloring in the PCB and other problems like this. So how can we prevent these things from occurring? And why should we care? Well, we should care. Obviously, each prototype takes more time and more money to develop. We actually also got survey data from a third party uh, research company called Aberdeen Group and they put an actual cost, they interviewed many thousands of uh, design companies and they, they calculated the average cost of a new prototype for a moderate com moderately complex PCB is 9,000, almost 9,000 US dollars. So f in the interest of time and money, you wanna be able to make as few prototypes as possible and get to market very quickly. And so to that end, uh, it's, it's worth considering simulation. In the past, we had a single supply voltage. Now devices have many supply voltages. In the past, we may have a dedicated layer for copper. Now we have to split the planes and share copper layers amongst multiple power supplies. So things, we're dealing with less copper for the, for, for the power supplies. And we ha in the past had higher voltages. Now we have much lower voltages and lower tolerances for error. And things are much more dense now. The packages keep getting smaller. So five years ago, I might design a printed circuit board with a 0.65 millimeter BGA package for the main microcontroller or FPGA. Now it's gonna be 0.4 or even 0.3 or chip scale package. So we're dealing with very dense components and not much space and not much uh, copper contact area to get the current into the device. So we have to deal with IR drops and high current densities and make sure we're not exceeding uh, those problems. So to do that in Altium Designer, we have introduced the visual power analysis with PDN Analyzer 2. Uh, we call this, this is version 2 because it's, it's an update with Altium Designer 18 and it now supports multiple ground and power domains. This is important because in multiple power supply uh, network or design, they're all sharing the same return path currents. If they're all sharing the same return path, the, the same return path in your ground copper, those currents superimpose and add up. 
and other IR drop analysis tools that simulate just one power supply at a time don't give you the full picture because you think everything's going to work fine, but you haven't been able to analyze it with everything at once using the same ground copper. And uh, as a result, additional IR drop and current density. So multiple rail simulation, it's, it's very customizable. It supports voltage regulator modules and it's visual inspection of the results right in the PCB editor. So let's take a look at what that looks like here. I have another simple design that's uh, set up for showing this. Let me find it, it's this one here. It's a small two layer board, not complex. It looks very banal at, at first glance. It runs from a five volt power supply and it, just two layers means that we have to have some narrow power delivery uh, traces to get power to the FPGA. The main device in the middle is, a, is an Altera FPGA. Now FPGAs use a fair amount of current on first startup because they have to be programmed with all the SRAM inside of the FPGA. And so for a brief burst, it pulls a lot of current. And so that's how we've set this simulation up where the main power supply of the FPGA internally is pulling almost one amp uh, during, the, during the configuration. So if I go to tools, PDN analyzer, The first thing it does is it, it automatically detects which are the power supply nets in the design and allows you to add those to the simulation. Let me turn off the compact view really quick here. Oh, this is the compact view. Oh, I don't want that. Okay. So the PDN analyzer panel opens and we can begin setting up our power delivery network and I can add, I can specify uh, which power supply net this is, what the ground net is. Then I can add sources or loads, but in the interest of time, let me just load this, load the uh, setup I've already done before. So I'll close that one. So we can set up our sources. In this case, it's J, J1 is the input. Let me clear that. So J1 is this jack. If I go to 3D mode, you'll see it's the, the DC jack where the power supply plugs in. And that comes in, goes through a fuse. The fuse, we can specify the maximum current, so let's say this is a 2.5 amp fuse. And this, having run the simulation, immediately gets a little red warning flag around it, and if I let the mouse hover over that, it says it's a pass-fail, it failed, because it's actually pulling, the design's pulling 2.923 amps through a 2.5 amp fuse. So the fuse is going to blow, it's telling me. Okay, but each element in the system allows you to specify internal resistances and limits for voltage drop and current or current per pin. And so you can see we've set up the topology for the power supply, goes through the switch, goes to the five volt net, there's some loads for the LCD. And these are failing based on uh, excessive voltage drop because the input is only at 4.75 volts. And as loads on this net, we have our two voltage regulator modules. Now we support different voltage regulators, linear and switching. And again, we can specify limits for the simulation to do pass-fail analysis. Those voltage regulators become the sources for the, for, the, uh, for the other nets in the power supply network. And they all share the same ground return copper. So here's the internal voltage, 1.8. And at pu pulling 0.9 amps from the FPGA with the current copper structure in the PCB and temperature rise, it's telling me that the voltage drop is excessive for that and it's failed as well. So this gives us an immediate result. 
Now if I want to probe the design, let's go to 3D mode and I'll just turn on the compact view so we can see the board a bit better. And I'll go to the visualization panel. I'll turn on the overlay so we can see it in the context of the, of the entire PCB design. This is the int VCC int, which is the 1.8 volt net. We'll zoom in a bit. And I want to find the peak values. So show me in the design the minimum voltage. I click locate and it's that pin of the FPGA right there. And that is the specific location where the voltage drop has gone too far low and the device may not operate correctly. I can do the same thing with current density and show the current flow arrows. So if you're examining copper shapes for your power supply and you think you know which direction the current's flowing through a piece of copper in the board, maybe this will reveal actually something different because it, it shows you across all the copper exactly which direction current's flowing from source to load. And th it will do the same thing for your ground net. So let me turn the ground on. This takes a little while to display because it's a bit more complex. Okay, and so we can see the currents, how the current's swirling through the copper on our ground polygon pores on the top and bottom layer of the board. Now let me find the peak in the design. And this zooms to the location of peak current density, which is right here, and highlights that. So this area here, maybe I need to add a second via or some extra copper to that uh, so as not to have excessive current density in that, that specific location. Um, once we've done all of that, we can take screenshots of these uh, areas of interest and we can generate an HTML, HTML report from PDN Analyzer. So it's very easy to, um, to get those results and do design reviews based on that. Okay, let's talk about Active Bomb. Altium Designer has a new way of generating and scrubbing your bill of materials to make sure you can actually uh, successfully get to production. So let me open a bill of materials document just to show you. This is a uh, DDR4 sodium memory module and there's a few components on here and this has pulled this part list live from the design and we can see it's actually querying real time the supply chain and showing is this part in volume production or is it not recommended for new designs and is there a problem with the supply chain of this component so we get these little warning icons over here this one says what's the warning here it says it has not recommended for new design life cycle state and there's no no ranking this is the ranking here you can give it a, a user rank. So there's a list of bill of materials rule checks that are executed real time on the bill of materials before you generate a report from it. And if, if a part is here but there's no known solution, so there's no known solution for this microchip component, so I'm going to go ahead and add a manual solution, it automatically searches all the distributors and we connect to over 200 distributors here and we can find a distributor that sells this part and has it in stock. Let's find one and add that solution in. So now I have a suitable solution which which says Arrow has this part in stock. They have 33,250 in stock and so and then I rank this solution. Now this has turned from a red warning sign to a green check mark. I can get this part and, uh, and go to production for my design. You can specify how many production units you want to you build. So if I want to make a thousand of these, then some of these may turn from a green check mark to a red warning because there's not enough in the supply chain to build a thousand units, for example. So there's a whole list of different bill of materials rule checks and they're all completely configurable. And data by default comes from the internet from our own search engines for component 
uh, data, uh, Octopart and Siva are the search engines we, we have. And they pull data every day from all the different manufacturers and suppliers. But you can also supply data from your corporate database. You can connect to a company database that monitors your own stock levels if, if you need to. So that's Active Bomb in a very small nutshell. Again, I'm taking way too much time. <laughs> so let me just talk about Draftsman. This is built into Altium Designer. You just add a, a, a drawing document to your project and you can add any kind of assembly or manufacturing view of the board to the drawing and uh, including isometric views, cutaway views, callouts, uh, component views, bill of materials. Here you can see the, the uh, layer stack table can be put in there as well. And we have a cross section view AA across this one um, where we've done some dimensioning. So full dimensioning can be done in there. Now what's the advantage? There's really two advantages. Having good documentation tool built into the same CAD software as your PCB design. The two advantages are it's linked and remains intimate with your actual PCB design. So if you make a change to the PCB design, you're not re-exporting data and updating, uh, updating your drawings in a separate CAD package. It's automatic. The updates are automatic. And the other advantage is you don't have to use a separate tool with a separate user interface. It's much easier to do your documentation very quickly using Draftsman. So this gives you assembly and manufacturing views, dimensioning, notes. It's fully integrated, links to the PCB, and it's faster than ever to do your documentation of your design in this way. Finally, and this is the last part of my demo, uh, is the multi-board assembly capability. Every PCB designer or every engineer is likely to work on systems these days where there's more than one PCB in the system. And so you need to be able to do this in an intelligent way that lets you manage connections and do the physical uh, assembly of the overall system. So we have on the electrical side a new editor for doing schematic. Um, the, here we have modules and the modules are linked with connectors and maybe cables or direct board to board connectors. And this, this facilitates connection management, pin swapping, and an electrical rule check so that if net names don't match on both sides, it flags an error. So you can fix it and make sure your connections have the correct pinouts. Then on the assembly side, the mechanical view, using the same native 3D graphics engine that Altium's so well known for, um, we have all the tools you need for aligning the boards together in the assembly and it will do, um, uh, it, it will allow you to do cutaway views and collision detection is, is also enabled in there so that you can get everything right the first time. So how does that look in the actual software? I have a design here which is that mini PC board. And in the schematic view, let me zoom in here, I have the motherboard, which is the mini PC. Then I have two uh, SODIM memory modules. They're instances of the same design. So it's the same child project in both cases, just multiple memory modules are plugged into different connectors here. And we have another board, which is our Wi-Fi module. So if I flip over to the assembly view, you can see this in this case, this is all pre-aligned. And we can also bring in step models of the enclosure. So you can see I've got the base step model and the, and the enclosure shell. So we can align objects and boards to our final product enclosure as well. But just so we can keep looking at things properly, I'll, I'll turn the visibility off on that. So how do things work here? Normally, I can select different modules and move them around with the gizmo. Normally boards come in and they may not be aligned perfectly. So this board may come in and it may not be, um, may not be the right height. So I'm gonna start by doing align 
plane to plane. And in this connector, there's a mating surface. Let me zoom in there so you can see. And that's my reference point on the mini PCIe connector. And then the mating surface is the bottom of that PCB. So that gets it to the right height. Now it's the right height for that. Next, I'm going to do align axis to axis and choose this mounting hole as my reference point. And then this mounting hole and it aligns my assembly perfectly. We can also move components and individual connectors around in the assembly and align maybe a potentiometer to a hole in a, in a front panel or a, a connector can be aligned to another connector to mate correctly and that affects the underlying PCB design so I can go move, it will move the component in the PCB design and I can then route that and, uh, and finish everything up knowing that everything's going to be perfectly uh, compatible. We also can view different and highlight different components or different net classes or nets in the design. So let's look at this. If I click here, it's showing me, let's zoom in properly there, the byte lanes going to the DDR memory sockets. And I want to see the same byte lanes in, uh, let's say, module three, which is the one on top, I believe. So I'll hold down uh, control and click the byte lane on that module and I can see this, this aligns, it does indeed align to the, the correct uh, pins on the socket. So we can trace signals through the system and make sure everything's aligning correctly. And of course in the, in the multi-board schematic we have that same capability to do electrical rule checking and run the connection manager that shows me the pin-to-pin -pin connectivity. And if there was a problem in here, it would highlight that in red if, if the net names didn't match or if there was a pin swap between two connections, we could see that pin swap here and propagate that from one board to another. So you can do pin swapping on one connector, bring that up into the multi-board assembly and push that pin swap through to the other PCB to make sure everything stays synchronized. Uh, just one final thing here. Um, let me clear that. Okay, I'll just clear that view. One final thing to show you really quick to wrap up here. I can do a cross-sectional view of the multi-board assembly. And this can be really useful for checking interferences in places where things would otherwise be obscured. So in this case, I can go in and I, I can see the cross-section of how that sodium module is sitting in the sodium socket and make sure everything's fitting correctly. So the cross-section view helps you see inside things and make sure there's no interferences. Um, so that's the end of my quick demo. I've hardly done it justice. There's a lot more to see in the tools, but are there any questions? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the question's where do we get the part data from? Uh, so there's two search engines. One is called Octopart. Some of you may have heard of Octopart. And the other is called Siva, C-I-I-V-A. And these were actually other companies, but Altium recently, sort of uh, about two years ago, we acquired both of them and brought their databases together. But both of them take data feeds every day from about 200 distributors, including all the biggest ones, DigiKey, Mauser, Newark, or Element 14, um, RS Components, uh, and so on. So we take daily data feeds from those distributors. Some of it we scrape, but most of it they send to us. So we get update, up-to-date uh, component supply chain information from there, yep. 
Any other questions? Yeah. So do you need an extra license for PDNA? The answer is yes. Every th everything is unified in Altium Designer except that that one has a unified user interface, but it is a separate licensed product. The reason for that is the engine is actually built by CST, who have a booth just past Altia over there. And CST uh, need us to pay them some royalty for their engine. So. But it's it's not a not a huge additional cost, just a bit, yeah. Okay, well thanks everybody. And if um, if you want to learn more in depth about Altium Designer or other products uh, and how to get the most out of them, we have a user conference every year now uh, in Munich in autumn called Altium Live, and we'd love to see you there. It's, it's not us doing tons of marketing and pitching products to you. It's Altium users who are experts and know how to use the tools really well, teaching other Altium users how to do what they do. So uh, it's a really good place to come and learn more. So hopefully see you there and thank you very much.